Hello my friends, I got Phil on camera today and we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, which you know, all topics in manufacturing are my favorite topics, but automation is definitely one of them. These beautiful orange machines. I got a surfboard over here, not really a surfboard, but we'll talk about that a little bit more. Robot cell behind me, but Phil is the expert, so Phil, let's talk about the automation. Let's start with what's behind us. I see some shrunk grippers, I see the KUKA machine, we'll talk about what I'm going to surf on later behind Absolutely. me. Uh, but what are we working on and where does KUKA stand out in the world of automation connecting with an audience? Perfect, perfect. Well, let's start with the demonstration. Uh, what you're seeing here is a robot. It's our Agilis. It's our smallest payload six axis industrial robot. And what we're demonstrating is the robot's ability on a real time basis to adjust for feedback on a force torque sensor that's integrated to the gripper. We're using a, a KUKA proprietary uh, feedback system called RSI. Works at a four millisecond refresh rate. Ooh. So the robot, as you can imagine, if we were to ask anybody in the audience to try to mesh these gears, you'd probably be messing around a little bit to try to get them all to line up. So what we're demonstrating is the robot's ability to uh, uh, simulate, mimic, what the human tactile feedback of a, your arm to your brain to your eyes, and we're demonstrating that with this particular demo. Very clever. We're utilizing ATI's force torque sensor and uh, really just constantly cycling through, changing the gear meshing on this particular cycle here. You see we're messing up the gears to show that there's no, uh, 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 what, what's the term, uh, no wizard behind the curtain here. This is real live demo changing on the fly. Well, we like that. We, the wizard behind the curtain can sometimes be tricky because we want to show how perfect we are, but not the, the world isn't perfect. And showcasing something like that makes it more like real life. And what a great system. So let's swing to the one behind me a little bit. Sounds good. When I think about automation, Phil, I think about how it's becoming easier to implement. It's becoming easier to help people understand how easy it is to use. It's becoming user friendly to change that same sentence and flip it around again. But it makes it, it makes, it gives us more courage to say, I can do this. And thanks to great partners like you have and integrators like you have, and we're at Maryfield today and talking about that as well. It gives us the, the courage to do something like this, right? The cobots, the robots, setting up cells. The way we do turnkeys a lot of these factories is show people, hey, this is what we can do. This is how we compete globally. But I'm learning more and more about cells like this that run autonomously that can actually, and I've seen this and I'm sure you have as well, pretty much run a machine shop from changing out tools to changing out parts, loading and unloading a machine. I mean, the imagination in my perspective is really the only limit. So let's talk a bit more about this autonomous situation. Does it work in small shops? Does it work in medium shops? Is it only for large shops? How and where can I see more of this and utilize it in my factories? Great question. You know, what you're talking about here is an autonomous mobile vehicle. In KUKA speak, it's a KMP, KUKA mobile platform. And what you're seeing here is the KMP 1500. The 1500 represents its payload, 1500 kilograms. Our payload, our portfolio uh, across the mobile platform starts at 600 kilograms goes up to uh, 100 tons. Wow. We, wow. Have, uh, we have mobile units that are moving airplane fuselages in uh, aerospace manufacturing facilities. So in the same way that our industrial robotics portfolio starts with a small payload, 4 kg, we move up to 1,000. In one case, uh, uh, in the locked case, we go up to 1,600 kg payload with our Titan. Same thing in our mobile platform. We start uh, down at 600 kg, 1500 kg, and that's where smaller shops, um, when you talk about accessibility, ease of use, ease of programming, as the technology advances for ease of use tools, KUKA has been in this industry mobile platform for 16 years. We're constantly developing easier tools to integrate so that maybe not quite at the small machine shop level, but definitely medium and large uh, machining facilities are able to integrate, just as you said, to have the mobile system either bring products to the machine tool, bring tooling to the machine tool to allow automation to change out parts, change out tools, 
And we don't stop there. Because we build the industrial robot, because we build the mobile platform, when you bring them together, you have a KMR, KUKA mobile robot. And now we put an industrial or a collaborative robot on a mobile platform, and we're able to bring that to where the work is happening. Either loading and unloading parts, loading and unloading tools, or doing post-processing, either polishing or grinding. Anything that the end customer needs, our technology uh, uh, enables system partners, integrators, to take anything they can dream and build it into our parts, our, our machinery. Phil, it seems like you have acronyms for everything. So just for fun, what does KUKA stand for? Because you have educated me, and there might be someone out there that would like to learn that as well, because I thought it was a word. I thought it was just a really cool, fun KUKA. What a fun word to say. Right. But it actually stands for something just like the other acronyms that you've thrown out for us today. Fantastic. Great question. So the name KUKA is an acronym, so it's always spelt all caps, K-U-K-A. It uh, derives from the uh, founders of the company, Keller, Unt, Napich, Augsburg. I'll give you three guesses which country we originate in. <laughs> I'm going to guess around the uh, Germany area. I like the way you think. <laughs> That's going to guarantee you a ride on the surfboard later, but we'll talk about that yes. after the fact. I like that you called it surfboard. One last question for you, Phil. You've been a real pleasure to learn from today. For everyone watching, if you have additional questions, by all means, send them over to Phil. Send them to Kuka. You know, we want to talk for about an hour and a half, and we would love to if you guys would continue to watch, but we don't always have that kind of the time so leave questions in comments reach out to KUKA learn more so the last question I have there's a rumor I've heard about you have actual robots moving cameras around as well do you think we could partner on something like that absolutely so we have you know KUKA's uh, a high high tech advanced technology allows us to do things as elaborate as meshing gears we have two system partners that specialize in adding cameras to industrial robots Motorized Precision and Sisu. Our video in the background here is uh, uh, cycling through some of our partners' uh, products. You see, you'll see them uh, highlight on that. But yeah, our robots, moving cameras, uh, and, and again, utilizing our technology to allow our system partners to put a camera on a robot and do amazing things. I hope that uh, you eventually get to meet both of those companies. I hope so too. And speaking of amazing things, you are one of those amazing things. Thank you so much for being a part of this conversation, Phil. Thanks for inviting and, me to the dance. Yes, and thank you for sharing with the audience. We appreciate your time and thank you all for watching as well. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.